do it for the cross. Yeah. Lift your hands and just worship him because he did it for you. Yes, thank you. Come on, think about it this morning and worship him for it. He did it for you. Thank you. As undeserving as we are, he did it for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He did it all. He did it all. Somebody open your mouth and give him a praise because he did it all.
Thank you for your rest. Thank you for your promise that you will give us rest. When this old weary life is over. And the trials of this experience are past. Thank you, God, that we got a home that's not made with hands. Eternal in the heavens. Thank you, God, that we got the promises of your word that you will never leave us nor forsake us. And that's an eternal promise. Because one day we will be with you face to face. In eternity. For all of eternity. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. The, the tears that we cry now are, don't compare to the joy that will be revealed then. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. For your rest. But you said in your word until then. That we need to continue to do some things yes, that, are, yes. that are foundational. Yes. That keep us on point. Yes, Lord. That keep us moving towards that ultimate yes. goal of eternity. Yes, Lord. You promised God that if we would acknowledge you yes. in all of our ways. Yes. That you would direct our path. Yes, yes. That's your word, not yes, ours. Yes, That's what you say. Yes, Lord. And we simply take you at your word this morning. Yes. One of those things that keeps us on the right path yes. mm. is something called communion. Yes. You said do this as often as you do it in remembrance yes. of me. Yes. No matter what's going on in this life, and, and that God, this journey has been up and down, side to side, sometimes upside down and backwards. Amen. But I thank you, O oh God, that our equilibrium doesn't come from a government. Right. It doesn't come from the financial market. Yes. It doesn't come from peace in the world. Because the whole world could be at war just like it is. But Father, this morning we step outside of this reality. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes, and we come to you. Yes. Our current and our eternal reality. Yes, the one that real that is real to us. The one that makes real promises. Yes. And the one that keeps real promises. Yes, the one that has a word for us today. And the one that will come through on that word for us today. The one that hears our prayer and hears our cry. Yes. And one that intercedes on behalf of our souls and even the groanings that we don't know how to put into English or any other dialect. You know it, you, you know it all the same. You know where we are. Yes, Lord. We come to you because you are real. Yes, Lord. As the songwriter said, you're real in my soul. Yes, Lord. Because you have washed and cleansed me and made me whole. Yes, I've had a real experience yes. with you and you really changed my life. And so I don't come to you just because I'm saved. I come because you have promised me the cup of salvation. And you will always be with me. So there's nothing that I face in this life that I cannot come to you for. Yes. Yes. So communion today is not just today. It's every day. Because I need you every day, every day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I need you when the sun is shining. I need you when the rain and the thunder is going on. I need you when everything's fine and I'm smiling. I need you when I'm crying and I can't even describe the pain that I'm feeling. I need you no matter what's going on. Yes, Lord. Yes, I do. I need you, Lord. Thank you, God, that you're present. Yes, Lord. You're available. You're accessible. You're reachable. Your Lord, I was pinned a song years ago, you're just a prayer of yes. And all we need to do is call on the name of Jesus. All we need to do is mention that name. Yes. The name that is above every name. Yes. The name that one day every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Yes. That you are Lord to the glory of God the Father. Yes. It doesn't matter who's prideful and who's arrogant today. Who's almighty and seems to be all sufficient today. God, one day every knee will bow and acknowledge that you are the real deal. And your word is true and your promises are true. And heaven is real and hell is as well. But we don't wait till then, God. We acknowledge you now. Yes, we acknowledge you as our Lord now. Yes, Lord. We praise you this morning, even to worship, yes. because you're our Lord now. Yes, you're our Savior now. Yes, We're not going to be forced to bow. We're not going to be made to bow. Right. The unbelieving world is going to have to do it even against their will. But, Father, we willingly come this morning yes. out, of, out of our own volition, out of our own decision, yes. out of our own worship. Yes. We bow before you right now. 
and we thank you that you are our Lord and our Savior. We praise you because you are a redeemer and our friend. We praise you because you are a healer and our sustainer. We bless you because you pick us up when we fall. We thank you because you hear our faintest cry. We love you today, Lord. We love you today, Jesus. We love you, Lord God. That's that wonderful name. Yes. Yes. No other name. Yes. But the name of Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. I need some worshipers Hallelujah. in here just to yes. lift that name up here. Hallelujah. Lift it up right here. Thank you, if you love them, lift it up right here. show it ain't fashion it's ain't force God we're doing it because we love you because we realize how much you love us you have proven yourself over and over and over again we have no reason to second guess you we don't place any blame at your feet you're almighty God you do all things well you're perfect in all of your ways God you're too wise to make a mistake and if we go through a little pain and discomfort down here, God, it's because you've seen that there's something good that's going to come out of it. Amen. Hallelujah. Something good is going to come out of it. Something glory. Glory is going to come out of it. Glory is going to come out of it. God's up to something good in our lives. And we love you for it today. So God, as we come to the table this morning, we come with praise and adoration on our minds, on our hearts. And yes, on our lips. Because the praise belongs to you. Would you take this time rapidly to search yourself as we come to the table? Before we do so, this is holy. It's one of those ordinances. But this is a built-in mechanism. It's a system that God has ordained, that Jesus has ordained. So that we will never forget the awesome love that Jesus has for us. So would you search yourself, search your heart, what do I mean? Confess your sins. Anything that you've done, said, or thought that is not pleasing to God, yeah. deal with it right now. That if we come to partake of these holy elements, that we do so with clean hands and a pure heart. For man looks on an outward appearance, but God sees the heart. Amen. Let him see your heart. And let him cleanse your heart right now. Take this moment and confess your sin before your father. Father in heaven, we continue in this worship experience, acknowledging the word that simply says that we would confess our sins, you're faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There's nothing to be added to that. That is a straightforward guarantee from you to us. And so we confess. We get it right with you because we are not our own. We belong to you. You have the rights over us. You have the authority over our lives. Cleanse us, wash us, make us holy in your sight that the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart might truly be acceptable in your sight. You're our strength and you're our redeemer. You bought us with a price that we could not pay. We belong to you. So God, make us holy as you are holy. 
Not just for the moment, but for eternity. And we'll forever give you the praise, glory, and the honor. And it's in Jesus' name we do ask it all. Amen. I'm going to ask now that you would stand. And those on this side, if you come this way, those on this side, if you come this way, return down the center aisle and uh, partake of the elements. Remain standing once you go back to your seats as we take communion together. Amen. Let's proceed. At last, and if my Savior be, and if my sovereign die, would he devote that sacred hymn for such a Himself on that cross bodily, bodily, bodily in our place. The bruises that were ours, He took upon Himself. The beating, the scourging, the whipping, the torture they took upon Himself. It was in our place. So as we eat today, I want you to remember Jesus took your place. And because of that, He deserves our worship. Let's eat together remembering the sacrifice of Jesus. The juice represents the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. For that same moment when he was beaten, he was beaten to the point of shedding blood. He shed his blood for our forgiveness of sin, that we might be saved, freed from sin, that we might be holy as he is holy. The blood washes us, not just one time, but thank God it keeps on and keeps on and keeps on cleansing us from all sin. No matter what it is, no matter what it is. His blood covers us. Somebody will say amen for the blood of Jesus covers. Let's drink together remembering the blood of Jesus. And everybody said amen. 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 And amen. amen. Deacon Jenkins coming now. Or the ushers are coming now. Whichever one. Uh, pass your cups to the center aisle. As we continue in worship. Amen.
see you this morning for worship and those that are joining us online uh, on social media, live stream on Facebook. God bless you for being with us today as well. We pray that the Lord has already blessed you. Amen. Amen. Already blessed you as we come in for this time of worship here on this first Sunday of the month of March. The Lord has blessed us to be uh, alive and well Amen. this far. Amen. Can we give a hand of praise for how he keeps us? Well, y'all can do better than that. Come on, we're going to pray for you like you're praying for your soul. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. Could have been dead in our grave. Lord. And the Lord made death behave. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Yeah, some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Amen. Amen. You've been there. You, 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 you've, seen, you've seen what could have happened. Yes. But the Lord didn't let it happen. Thank you, Lord. You have a witness in the house. I'm by myself. Hallelujah. You were all go fair. You, you yes. felt it coming on. And I'm not talking about medicine. I mean, medicine has its place. Yeah. But I'm talking about when the hand of the Lord steps in and says, oh, no. You're going to die one day, but it ain't going to be today. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. I mean, a whole lot of folk Amen. in the grave. I've been in the cemetery, and I wonder how they, how, how they make room for all these folk after all these folk died over the last two or three years. Yes. They find some place for them, but I'm going to tell you right now. The spot for me ain't, ain't for me just yet. Not yet. And the spot, you might have your plot picked out, but it ain't for you yet. just yet. Not yet. How the back at you, somebody? If you're going to hand of God, if you're going to hand of God, can we just pray yes. for the we ain't yes. dead yet? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Turn your neighbor and tell him, I'm still alive. I'm still alive. God got something he yes. wants me to do. Yes. Turn to somebody else and tell him, I ain't dead yet. Well, uh, we thank God for February, our Black History Month. We uh, took some time to lay some things out that were uh, historic, according to our ancestors, and the things that have been done and accomplished. And we highlighted some very key figures uh, during the month of February as well. Uh, posted some things online for your enjoyment and for your education as well. And as I said, uh, the month of March is our missions month. And uh, we look forward this month to highlighting some missionaries, uh, and particularly some African-American missionaries. Um, why do you say that, Pastor? Because a lot of times uh, you don't hear about African-American missionaries. It's something that we don't highlight enough and has not been historically highlighted enough in our churches. Uh, while we support missions, and many churches do, uh, you don't hear of what's going on um, from our perspective as African Americans. Well, today we're going to do uh, something a little different. Today we're going to highlight uh, perhaps someone you've never heard of before. And Sister Gwen's going to come in just a moment and do that. And then we're going to highlight one of our current missionaries, uh, Pastor Josiah Kennedy. So sit back and, and let the Lord just speak to your heart as we focus on missions for this month. And it's every Sunday this month as we highlight missionaries from the past and from the present. Sister Gwen, would you come at this time and lead us into our missionary spot? I give her a good God bless you. Thank you, Lord. Presented to Stockton's daughter and son-in-law, the Reverend Ashbell Green, then president of Princeton College, as a gift. Betsy Stockton was now in a household that encouraged her ambitions and intelligent attitude. She was given books and was allowed to attend evening classes at Princeton Theological Seminary. When Stockton expressed an interest in becoming a Christian missionary, 
She was granted her freedom and accepted into membership by the American Board of Commissions for Foreign Missionaries. On November 20, 1822, Stockton and 20 other missionaries set sail for New Haven, Connecticut for the Hawaiian Islands. Upon her arrival, Stockton became the first known African-American woman in Hawaii. Stockton was assigned to a mission in Lahana, Maui in 1823. Up until that time, missionaries instructed Hawaiians in Christianity, but had limited their teaching of reading, writing, and math to their own children and the children of the Hawaiian chiefs. Stockton persuaded Charles Stewart, the head of the Mahana Missionary Group, to allow her to create a school for the Maka Anani, which means common people. Stockton learned the Hawaiian language and established a school in Maui, where she taught English, Latin, history, and algebra. The site of her school is the location of the current Mahana Luna School. Stockton left Hawaii in 1825, returning to the mainland where she was assigned to teach Native American children in Canada. She spent the final years of her life teaching black children in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Stockton died in her home of Princeton, New Jersey in October 1865. Wow. When she saw the Civil War. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, I love the Gwen commentary. <laughs> hey, thank you for reading that, Sister Gwen. Um, it, these are things, these are people, these are our people. Many times we don't hear about in history. Uh, and if you, if, if you were to go to Maui today, you would see there's evidence that, you know, uh, what we just read and heard of is true in that area because that's where the Lord used her uh, a long time ago. But the Lord used her. Uh, and I pray, Lord, uh, if you ever send me on mission film, let it be Hawaii. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm being selfish. Amen. But we thank God for Bessie Stockton. And uh, now I want you to turn your attention towards the screen as we highlight again our own missionary, uh, Pastor Josiah Kennedy. He has also put together a little video introduction to his ministry. So many of you that are watching online, maybe you're not familiar with Josiah Kennedy, uh, give attention to the screen. This will also be posted on our Facebook page as well so that you can get to know who Pastor Kennedy is. Let's give attention to the screen. Hello, I'm Josiah Billy Kennedy, married to Mary Billy Kennedy. The Lord has blessed us with three children. At the moment, we are working in Ghana, West Africa, as church planters. I also do teach in the Bible College. The Bible College started by our church as far as 2007. By the grace of God, on the completion of Bible school, the Lord led me to work with the Willow Baptist Church of Upham in the central region of Ghana. I sat there with my family for seven years, and in 2007, the Lord called us to come to Accra, the capital city of, of Ghana, to plant church. While we work with the, the Willow Baptist Church in um, in the central region, the Lord bless us with the church plants. We planted three other churches while I was there. And in 2007, we came to Accra, led by the Holy Spirit of God, to come and to start a new church called the Crossroads Baptist Church. We have been a Crossroads Baptist Church by the grace of God since 2007. The Lord has blessed us again. We have seen many souls saved. We see thousands of, of, of kids come to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. We see many souls have a, have received Christ as their Lord and Savior and have given themselves to water baptism. 
And you see many of them also call to Bible college, being taught the truths of God's word and have come out to work uh, as full-time ministry in the Lord's vineyard. By His grace, we are into Bible school also. The Lord has led us through our ministry. Many young men have been called to Bible school. And to the glory of God, today we have been full-time ministry. Every year, we have vacation Bible school. And through that ministry, thousands of young men, young boys and young girls have come to know Christ as their Savior. Through that ministry, we have been able to reach many of the kids, many of the children home, presenting the gospel to their parents. And many of these parents have also come to know Christ as their Lord and Savior. We are, by the grace of God, also be able to reach out to many of the villages here presenting God's word. It is our hope and prayer that next year we will start a new church plant in a, in a, in a, in a, in a village very close to us in Accra. He in prayer with us. By the grace of God, the Lord give us what we have learned. We've been able to put a check building on. And to his glory, the Lord is building his church. Since the covet, we've not been able to have a teaching Bible school. We pray that by this year, since it's gone down with it, we will be able to host Baptist Bible School in many of the churches that are around us in Bogowa. We are praying with us. We are praying that we will be able to bless some of these people that come to know Christ as their Savior to church this Sunday. We are praying also to start a great school for many of the students that attend church go to school in some Muslim schools and um, we're praying that God will enable us to have a school that will not only teach the academics but also show them Christ and what Christ can do in their life. We want to bring up young men and women in our community that will know Christ and help develop our community. We thank you so much for your support. Thank you for your love for us and for the ministry here in Africa, Ghana. God bless you. Keep praying for us. Bye-bye. Amen. 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 We thank God for Pastor Josiah Kennedy for doing great work in God West Africa. And I ask that you would continue to pray for him. Pray for his ministry. Pray for his family. Uh, remember that COVID is not just here in the States, it is everywhere. And um, so while it is different from place to place, uh, still pray for the protection, for the healing, and for the opportunities that God continues to lay them lay before them for the gospel's sake. So let's pray for Pastor Josiah Kennedy. Let's bow in prayer right now as we cover him and his ministry. Father in heaven, we thank you and praise you for Pastor Josiah Kennedy. We thank you, God, for the call of God on his life. And I pray, oh God, for your protection and covering over him day, day by day as he continues to do the work of the Lord faithfully. Father, I thank you for the partnership that uh, he has with Baraka and other supporting churches. And I pray, oh God, that you would continue to meet his needs. 
uh, whatever they might be, whether it be personal, whether it be family, uh, whether it be the ministry. I pray, oh God, that you would uh, meet his needs, even now as I speak, undergird him, strengthen him, give him father confidence in you day by day to know, oh God, that uh, your hand is leading him where your hand is providing for him. So God, continue to meet his needs and use them for the glory of God. Uh, we realize that no matter what type of ministry that we are attached to, it is a time-sensitive assignment. One day, the ministry down here will be no more. We will be with you face-to-face -face in eternity. And I pray, oh God, that whether we're on a mission field like Pastor Kennedy or here in the States as we are here at Baraka, that Father will be faithful to do what you called us to as long as you call us to it until the work is done. Yes. So I pray, O oh God, for Pastor Kennedy and all of our missionaries. Yes. Bless them with stability. Bless them with longevity. Bless them with opportunities, open doors, where they can go forth for the gospel of Jesus Christ and see lives change and one to Christ. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We thank God for that. So stay tuned. Each Sunday, we'll highlight somebody from the past, but then we'll highlight one of our current missionaries as well, all to uh, get our minds and hearts focused on uh, missions and uh, what is going on uh, that might not be recognizable to us here in the States, but yet God is moving abroad. Amen. Well, we have a few announcements we want to share with you at this time, and um, uh, we have a couple things we want to bring before you. Uh, first of all, amen, we go to the first slide. Uh, we are first, first of all, we are officially open for in-person worship. And we thank God to see so many of our people here in person. Give yourselves a hand this morning. We've been faithful to watch online and worship online, giving online, praying online, maybe even sleeping online. I don't know, I don't know. But we thank God that you're in person. It's good to see your faces in the building. And to those that are still worshiping online, God bless you for being a part of our service today as well. And all of, all of our guests and visitors, welcome to Baraka as well. Amen. Uh, we have some other announcements we want to share at this time as well. Not only are we open for worship, but um, um, there we go. March is our missions month. We can, we can go to the third one because we, we just covered that one. March is our missions month, but also this Wednesday night, as you know, we've been uh, studying by way of a video series through the latter part of the book of Exodus. Uh, we're going to continue that, uh, and there'll be some other videos that I will post online uh, for those chapters. Uh, but for this month, we're going to change and, sh and shift. Uh, pastor Battle is uh, the pastor of Cap Allentown Baptist Church. Uh, he's on vacation this month. He's preaching today over at Capitol Allentown, but after today, he'll be on vacation for the remainder of the month. Um, as you know, he's our friend. He's my friend. And um, uh, we've been trying to, myself, along with a few others, have been trying to encourage him to uh, go on vacation. Uh, he's been there for five years. It doesn't seem like five years. He's been passing there for five years. And in five years' time, he has not taken a vacation. Uh, that is not healthy. So I've encouraged him along with others to take a break and to help him out during this time. So for the month of March, Wednesday night, we're going to have his people merge with us on our Facebook page, and they're going to join us for, for Bible study. So what I'm going to do, the Lord led me this way, is to do a teaching through the book of uh, Philippians. Uh, and that book, if you know anything about it, is the book of encouragement. Uh, it's, it's one of the biggest sources of encouragement. And the time that we're living in now, all of us, whether you know it or not, need encouragement. I don't need to ask you who you need. I, all of us need encouragement. So I, I want you to sit back and with the Bible in hand and for the month of March receive what the Lord will say uh, by the way of the book of Philippians. I'm looking with anticipation as to what God will say as well because I'm in that need of encouragement as well. So join us on Wednesday nights. Uh, we'll have some guests on our Facebook page from Camp Allentown. We'll welcome them, and we'll see what God will do during this time and season of encouragement. Amen. 
All right, let's move on to number four. Uh, March 27th is our church anniversary, the 51st anniversary. Wow. That was really slow. That was incredibly slow. I feel like John and Carson right there. It's like a delay, you know. 51 years of ministry. God has blessed us with 51 years of ministry. And the God be the glory for what he has done. Uh, I know 2020 seemed, came in like a vengeance. It seemed like we skipped a year or so. Uh, but God's timing, God's calendar keeps rolling on. And he blessed us to be here 51 years to see God's faithfulness. So join us. More information coming as to what the fourth Sunday will look like as we celebrate God's faithfulness to us as a church. Amen. All right. Number five, we have some prayer requests. We want to keep lifting up uh, Sister Dorothy Ricks. Good to see Sister Donna. Sister uh, Donna, how's Sister Ricks doing currently? Okay, but she still needs your prayers. She should be back next Sunday. Okay. Amen. We'll keep her lifted up in prayer. Uh, Brother Digger Ricks as well. Also, excuse me, I want you to lift up uh, Brother Rick Smothers, our bass player. As you know, he's not here today. He lost his mother last week. We want to keep him in prayer. Um, as a um, prepare for the funeral, and uh, of course, we want to cover him spiritually and emotionally as well. Him and his wife and his family keep them lifted up during this time of loss. All right. Um, do, is that it? Do we have anything else? Yes. Oh, praise the Lord. Praying and praying yes. and praying and praying and praying. Yes. And, uh, and he's been consistent. Yes. He's been consistent, believing God and yes. keeping us informed yes. as well. And the Lord opened up the door and he got the job last week. Praise God. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. 
I like being at home, but I don't like being home that much. <laughs> some of y'all don't like being home that much either. You stir crazy. Some of y'all came back out before we actually opened it up. I, that's all right. We had some of y'all out last week. That's good. Because you want to be in the house of God. Amen. All right. That's all we have today for announcements. Praise the Lord. Um, we're ready for our offering time at this time. Ushers, if you make way to the front this time, we're going to pray and ask God's blessing over the offering. Those that are online can give. Uh, online at faithlife.com forward slash baraka dash baptist slash church forward slash give. You can go there and you can give online as we give here in person as we honor the Lord with tithes and all. From the time to 10% of what God has blessed us with, we give it faithfully back to Him as an act of worship in our worship experience today. If you need a giving envelope, please indicate one of the ushers at this time. Uh, we say that because rather than just putting cash in the plate, Please use the giving envelope system. That way we can keep track of what you're giving and then generate the statements at the end of the year as to what you've given. Uh, that's in your tax benefit, so trust me, you want to use those envelopes. Uh, you can do that now as we prepare to give. Malachi 3 and 10. And try me now and this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour you out such blessing, that there will not be room enough to receive it. That's God's promise to God's people. Let's take him at his word. Ushers, which we come this time. Every heart praying as we give today. Our Father and our God, we thank you for this opportunity to worship you through giving. We realize, God, you we give because you first gave. You taught us how to give. So, Father, take what we give today and multiply it. Use it for your glory and for your honor. That your agenda might be accomplished through the life and the ministry of this church. We love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's get to the Lord this morning.
way looks like. Each day, Lord. No matter what the issues of life look like. You've got a promise from your heavenly father that he will lead you all the way. Somebody shout hallelujah. Glory to God. And Father, we love you for that fact today. Uh, we're not thinking about it twice, second guessing it, adding to it. No, nothing to be added to it, nothing to be taken away. You are a God of the word. And we simply take you at your word today. And we thank you for your promises that are yea and amen. Because you promised it. And you're not a man that you should lie. What you said you will do. What you promised it shall come to pass. And no matter what our obstacles might look like down here. Uh, the kingdom of God is fully equipped to keep us afloat. To keep us anchored. And to give us victory and success. Because it's brought to us by the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And if he can conquer death, hell, and the grave, yes. he can keep us going. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. If he can get up from the grave, yes. we're almost to Easter season here. Mm -hmm. But if you can rise over what we die from, mm -hmm. yes. you can certainly give us the victory yes, through the Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank you for that today. In Jesus' name. Now, Father, I pray that you would guide our time now, guide my tongue, guide our hearing, and then guide our heart and our footsteps when we leave this place after being exposed to the awesome authority of your word. Lord Jesus, take control now. And equip us as the saints of God, those that are here in person, those that are watching online, be faithful, faithful witnesses. Faithful stewards, faithful servants, until you say well done. Yes. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. 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 Grab your Bibles, if you will, and turn with me to Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 and 29. Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 and 29. And what you have it, would you stand on reverence as we read the word of God? If you have an electronic copy of God's Word, God bless you. You're probably already there. Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 and 29, and verse 30. Only verse 30, yeah. Matthew 28, Matthew 11, 28 through 30. I want you to have a stand. And the text reads, Come to me, all you who labor, and a heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Father, I pray now that as we open up your word, speak, Father, I pray for you have the words of eternal life. I pray that that eternal word would have an eternal impact now in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. I want to talk this morning on the subject of place of rest. A place of rest. The day and age which we're living in, beloved, is anything but restful. We could use the word restless. We could use the words tired, weary, uh, frustrated, uh, worn out, burnt out, a whole lot of adjectives that describe our current day. And no matter where you find yourself on your journey, uh, fatigue has a way of creeping up on us whether we're young or old, whether we're seasoned or just beginning our journey. Whether you've been saved for a year or two, or whether you've been walking with God the majority of your life, all of us find ourselves, either currently or at some other point in our lives, in need of rest. And of course, as we look at the text today, we, we cannot skip over the main teaching point of the passage, which is not rest for the body. That's not what the text says. 
Come unto me, all you that are labor and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest for your body. That's not what the text reads. The text reads, he'll say, he'll give us rest for our souls. For our souls. Amen. That immaterial part of us that we cannot see, touch, uh, it is undetected to the naked eye. It's the real you. It's the real me. Uh, it's not the part that people see. It's the part that God sees. It's the part that controls the tangible. We're trying to get this. It's the part of you, even though it's undetected, it's the part that, if you be honest, is the most needed. Because it controls the tangible. You can make up this body, you can shower this body, you can, you can, you can take care of this body. This is a temple, yes. And we ought to take care of our bodies, but listen to me good. We can do everything on the external that we desire. And still we broke down. Still be in need of rest. Because the external is not the main part of us. It's the part that gets a good Instagram post. It's the part that makes a good, a good a posting on Facebook and Twitter. But it's not the real you. You see, a lot of our culture today has become super duper focused on things that are temporal. Social media has its place. But understand, every time you pull out your smartphone and you begin to peruse over your own page or somebody else's page, you're not looking at the real them. Amen. And you're certainly not posting the real you. Amen. Yes. Yes. A lot of people that are smiling today are not smiling That's over right. Truth. Can I preach about this? Truth. A lot of people that seem to be having a great time, even on vacations, traveling the world, doing this or that. Yes. It does not portray the reality of the nature of their soul. That's right. That's why we scratch our head when somebody that's famous dies prematurely. Mm. A drug overdose. Or some kind of violent act. Or some kind of untimely death. Mm -hmm. Because it seemed like they were so happy. It seemed like they were so yeah. into their career. Right. Maybe they were a comedian. And a lot of people that make you laugh, you, you assume certain things. You presume certain things. Mm -hmm. That they are at a certain level of comfort or ease. Or, or everything in their life is going right because they're so funny and they're so happy and they're so joy, joy, joyful. Mm -hmm. When the reality can be, and many times is, just the opposite. That the people that have the this uh, persona of being always on top, when the applause is gone and when the camera's gone and when the light's out, they go back to a place of darkness, yes. a place of depression, mm -hmm. a place of anxiety, mm -hmm. a place of loneliness. Yes. Undetected to the masses. That's right. Camera doesn't capture that part of them because that's who they really are. Many times, those kind, those, those people in that in that area, no matter what their uh, 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 assignment is, or their job is, or their career might be, they find themselves in a holding pattern of depression because the masses will not and cannot. They're, they're, listen, they're not capable of understanding a different version of them because what puts money in their pockets is to put a smile on their face and act like everything's fine. Well, look, you don't have to be a comedian or a talk show host or a celebrity or a sports figure or someone famous to go through that. Because the text that we read today talks about God's people. God's people. Life is hard. And I'm at the point in my life where I'd rather hang around honest people than folk that want to fake it till they make it. Nothing wrong with being honest about your realities. And I'm 
not talking about being a negative person. I'm not talking about, oh, woe is me and everything's going wrong and I'm I'm just holding on. I wish Jesus would come today because I just want to get out. You know, you see, you can go to the extreme where you actually exercise no faith whatsoever. Okay? That's not what I'm talking about. That's not what the text is talking about. But facing reality. The text tells us that we're not facing it alone. Never has been, and we never will face it alone. Because God said, Jesus says his words. They're in red in your Bible. Amen. Jesus says his words. That there is an intersection where God runs into us and we run into him. And that intersection carries some help. Carries some resources. It carries a new perspective. It carries new directions, instructions. Perhaps that we've never experienced before. You realize that a lot of people have been walking with Jesus a long time, in the church a long time, saved a long time, but still have not learned some things that ought to be learned. Don't assume just because you're saved and you've been saved for as many years as you can count that everything is already under the belt. I got it. It's already done. Been there, done that. No, there's some new things. Somebody shout new things. Yes. The joy of my life as I get older is understanding all of the newness that God has. I've been saved the majority of my life, five years of age. But the new things blow my mind. When I sit down at my desk and I pull up my devotions, new things, Amen. new things. When I when I when I when I when I sit down to, and lay down to pray or kneel down to pray, new things God brings to my heart, and my spirit, and my mind. You see, that's not my body in operation at times. Sometimes, sometimes my body is fatigued, tired, but it's my soul. There's a connection there. There's a soul connection. Yes. <laughs> and sometimes we don't use that connection. My phone is, is, is broadcasting right now. God bless y'all because y'all are recipients of the broadcast. Because the phone is plugged in. While all of us are you know, configured to go to Facebook, that's good. But that's no good if I don't have any power in the battery. Amen. What's going to happen if the battery runs out while Facebook is live streaming? It's going to shut down. Because it needs power. Our lives are not designed to run without power. So I'm trying to get you to understand. You can have everything else in place. No power, no success. No power, no victory. No power, you run into fatigue, burnout. You're tempted to give up. And to avoid those extremes. Here's where our text becomes personal. Jesus says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. He says something about our reality that ought to catch our attention. Understands. Jesus understands. We've not a Savior that doesn't understand or is devoid of our realities. He is not out of touch. Matter of fact, any frustration you've ever felt in your life, any ills or pain or issues you've ever gone through in your life, that be other, it doesn't matter what it is, let me tell you something. We have a Savior in Jesus Christ that has been well acquainted with every emotional swing we've ever experienced in this life. Jesus gets us better than we get ourselves. Say, preacher, what do you, what do you understand? What, what do you mean by that? Well, you see, most of us have to go to therapy to understand ourselves. Counselor to understand ourselves. We need to go to a doctor to understand ourselves. Mm -hmm. Jesus understands us without a copay. Amen. Amen. You know what I said? Jesus understands us yes. without a copay. Yes. You ain't got to pay $30 for it. No, 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 $15. No, no. He understands that you keep money in your pocket. Matter of fact, he'll give you some more because the better you become acquainted with his knowledge of you and his will for you and, and his ways that cover us, even as we look at this text, that keep us from going under. He has a way of keeping us afloat so that our lives are filled with vitality and with strength and with 
direction and with determination and with the power and the aid of the Holy Spirit. We understand that Jesus knows us better than we know ourselves. So that's why he begins, verse 28, by saying, come to me. Stop running to everybody else who doesn't know the real you. Stop talking to everybody else that doesn't understand the real you. Stop, 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 stop trying to confide in people that don't have the answer for you. He says, come to me. Because I made you. I I created you. I formed you in your mother's womb. And whether you listen to that when you got saved recently or whether you've been saved a long time, I know your personality. I know your emotional makeup. I know how you tick. I know what throws you off kilter. I know what gets you discouraged. That's why it says, bring your real self to me. Because I hold the deed to your DNA. I hold the deed to your creator. I made you come back to your creator. Amen. Amen. Now, not only as our creator, but as a Christian. Everybody's created by God. Everybody is formed by the hand of God. But not everybody has a personal relationship with God by way of Jesus Christ. Everybody, everybody's created. Everybody breathing in, exhaling, breathing in, you know, all that stuff. Yeah, that's everybody. Saved or unsaved. But not everybody has a come to Jesus moment in their lives. Not everybody can pray today. Did y'all hear what I just said? Everybody got problems. Everybody got pressure. But not everybody's got a prayer. Not everybody's got a point where they can access this same God. In a meaningful, life-changing way. Everybody doesn't have a holy hookup. Not everybody has this divine relationship. But he says to those that do, come to me. In other words, bring your problems, bring your cares, Bring your situations. Bring the real you. And when you come into God's presence, don't come with pretense. Don't come with fakeness. Don't come with a propped up puppet version of yourself. All of us got a puppet version of ourselves. Some of us have used it. Some of us have, have, have thrown it in the closet and refused to use it anymore. Let me tell you something. Throw it in the closet and refuse to use it anymore. Bring the real you to Jesus. Bring the real you to Jesus because Jesus really wants the real you because he really wants to change the real you. He really wants to strengthen the real you. He really wants to pour wisdom and discernment and power and might into the real you. He can't use the public version because that ain't his creation. That's what we created so the people will think of us better than we, we think of ourselves. He says, bring the real you to Jesus. Bruised, beaten, battered, frustrated, uh, want to cuss, want to fuss people out. Listen, the real you, I don't care how late X it is, God ain't scared to deal with the realities of our lives. Amen. Amen. You ain't got to fix yourself up to come to Jesus. The text says, come unto me all you who are labor and are heavy laden. That means you busted, disgusted, and broke, and you are burdened down. And there is no pretty way to dress that up. There is no pretty way to change that. There is no pretty way to present that. It is what it is. God is not scared. Jesus says, I, I, I want to deal with real folk. I want to I, I wanna deal with real folk because he really wants to make a difference in our lives. But many times we cannot experience the change and the victory that God wants to bring into our lives because we won't bring the real us. Church is filled with pretense. It's time out for pretending. I, I mean, thank God for suits and dresses and y'all look good today. But emotionally and spiritually, psychologically, bring the real you. In worship, bring the real you. In prayer, bring the real you. When you open up God's word and, and you say, Lord, I don't even know if I can focus today, bring the real you. 
Lord, I, I, I mean, you know, some stuff is tough to swallow spiritually. But still bring the real you. Why? Because it's the best and it's the only way to approach a real God. Amen. God is real. Let the church say amen. amen. And if God is real, he wants real people. Right. Amen. He's not a fake God. No, no, no. He's a real God. He wants real people so that he can really transform my lives. In other words, he ain't playing games. Life is too quick to play games. And there have been people that have been in churches for years and years and years who have played games, who have brought facades before God, and even their own. Look at the Pharisees. He said, this is when he taught his disciples to pray. He said, don't pray like the Pharisees. Why? Because that's not the real them. That's the, pup, the puppet version of them. That's the, that's, the, that's the political version of them. That's the religious version of them. But that's not who they really are. Matter of fact, when he told them about himself, they didn't like what he said because you're, you're of your father, the devil. Mm -hmm. You brood of vipers. Jesus told them who they really were. They wouldn't receive it because that's not the puppet version. Mm -hmm. And what God is saying, listen, I ain't playing games with you because life is short. And I don't want you to die from the doorstep of the church and bust hell wide open because you refuse to bring the real you to Jesus. Look at all the miracles that Jesus performed in his life. I'm thinking about the man that was lame and had the four friends that brought him to Jesus. And because of the crowd that was around the house where Jesus was teaching him, they had to get him up on the roof and break up the roof and let him down in the middle of the room so that Jesus could heal him. You see, that was the real. That, that was real. He was paralyzed. He needed healing. He was broke down. His body was deformed. He had a real need. And they got him to Jesus in the real version of who he was. Is that how we come to Jesus? Even in your own personal prayer time, you come to Jesus and you really talk to him like you talk to your neighbor? We're talking about just a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our troubles. Do you, do you tell him all about your troubles? Or do you talk around your troubles? Or do you, you, do you tell everybody else your troubles, but you don't tell Jesus your troubles? Because we got to rehearse, we got to learn the line of behavior when we come before God. God, I thank you uh, for food. I thank you for shelter. I thank you for home. I thank you for good health. I think, and we go through, and God's like, are you ever going to get to the real deal? I know you're disgusted. I know you're hurting. I know you're going through this, that, and the other. But you've never seemed to bring that reality to me in prayer. This is what I'm talking about. Let's stop the formalities and bring the real deal to Jesus. The reason why we don't get rest for our souls, the reason why we don't have insight for our future, the reason why we don't know what to do next and the discernment that is needed to make those decisions is because we don't have that reality and that sincerity in our own time with God. There needs to be a shift and a change from religious jargon, from religious lingo, to a reality of, Lord, I need your help. Yes. And that doesn't need to be a conversation with anybody else. Maybe it will lead to that. But initially, it needs to be an honest cry to God. Not out of frustration, but out of need. Out of need. Make sure when you pray, you're praying honestly. Make sure when you write down your prayer requests, and some of us ought to because we lose track of really what's going on in our lives. Write them down and say, Lord, I'm believing you for this. I'm believing you for this. I'm believing. Don't be afraid to write stuff down. Ain't nobody going to read it. Some of us are scared to document our issues because we think folk will, look, look, get a lock on it. Whatever you got to do. But when you write down those needs, it's between you and God. And some of us need to start being honest with pen and paper. Because when we put it down and document it, we can go back to it. And listen, this is where the joy comes in when God answers that prayer. And you can check that thing off and say, Lord, thank you. I was dealing with this, 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 and this. But you moved in this way. And, and what do you what does that produce? It produces, it produces praise and thanksgiving. It, it produces a thankful and a grateful heart. That God, you heard my cry last year when I was going through this. But look at how you moved and how you answered my prayer. Has anybody ever been there, done that, and seen the hand of God work things out in your life? Or am I here by myself this morning? God will. We need to get more serious with it. Because coming to 
to Jesus, as verse 28 says, come to me. Those that are busted and disgusted and labored heavily means the pressure of his life is such that it's showing. Jeremiah 31 verse 25 says this, for I testify, I, I, rather, for I satisfy the thirsty person and feed all those who are weak. So what Jehovah God says, for I satisfy the thirsty person and I feed all those who are weak. God knows how to meet your needs. God knows where you are emotionally and he knows how to meet you on every level of your life. Come to Jesus. As the songwriter says, come to Jesus. All you who are laboring and heavy laden, I will give you rest. Here's the result. I've got something for you. I've got a place of rest. Some of us have never experienced that literally in our Christian journey. Notice the succession. Approach God. He's not going to make you. And he's not going to come and force himself on you. But he says, you've got to make a decision of your will to come to Jesus. You've got to make a decision of your will to direct your anxiety and the passion even through the pains of life to approach God with it every time. I'll even go as far as, go as, far as to say this. You're going to probably find yourself spending more time than you already do in prayer. And that's a good thing. Amen. That's a great thing. Amen. Because there's no better way to spend your time than in the presence of God. Amen. Amen. And even when you struggle to do so, I pray that you'll find strength to keep on doing it. When distractions come, I pray that even if you have to regroup, come back around, pick up where you left off. Yes. Do it. And remember this, the devil will fight you tooth and nail because yes, the devil doesn't want you to get close right. to God because he doesn't want you to find rest. Yes. He wants the crazy cycle to be... Continue to be the crazy cycle. He, he wants the frustration to still be in charge. He wants the ag agony and the anxiety. He wants the frustration and pain. All those negativities, he wants those to still be on the table. God said, if you come to me, I'll wipe the table clean. I will get you in a place that you've never experienced before. I will give you something you've never experienced before. I will give you rest for your soul. The devil wants to afflict your body. But when Jesus says, I've covered your soul, I think the devil can do it. When you've gone into that secret place, that hiding place, that place where God meets you and you and him alone, if you don't have that place with him, I, I pray, I pray, I pray that you find that secret closet, that I'm saying uh, uh, figuratively, that secret place where you meet with God and God meets with you. And when you get overwhelmed with life, you go to that secret place. And you spend that secret time in the presence of God. I'm not talking about as a last resort. I'm talking about like Daniel. He prayed three times a day. Even before the, 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 the religious rulers and those political rulers lied on him and got him thrown into the lion's den. I want you to understand like Job who prayed uh, three times a day and covered his family faithfully, faithfully, faithfully. Yet God you know, allowed the enemy to, to come and beat up on him and take just about everything he had. But there was a practice of faithfulness between them and God that measured their spiritual growth and kept them afloat even when they went through hellish situations. What am I saying to us today? We've got to go up into a place where that secret closet is that it's like that phone booth of Superman. It's got to be the place that we go to be transformed from this reality to a strengthened and powerful and victorious reality. Does anybody know what I'm talking about today? That secret place where God meets with you and you meet with him. Everything else in this life hangs on the reality of how quickly can you get with God. It's not a prerequisite. It's not an option. It's 
mandatory. That doesn't mean that you won't go through. But it does mean that we won't go through like we've been going through. And some of us ought to be tired of the way we've been going through. Tired of the ups and the downs. Tired of the tears that we didn't have to cry. Because I'm here to tell you that he will turn your mourning into dancing. Anybody know what I'm talking about today? He will turn your smile, your frown into a smile. He can't turn things that are upside down right side up. He can bring you joy in the place of your sorrow. He can give you hope for all your tomorrows. You don't have to give up. Somebody might be listening to me right now and you're contemplating giving up, turning around, unplugging, and doing something different. Let me tell you something. There's nothing better in your life than to trust God with your life because God has the best life for you. There is no better version. There is no better option. It's Jesus or nothing. He says, I'll give you rest. Rest is only valid when you're going through restlessness. Amen. You got you to gotta go through some stuff to appreciate the things that God gives you. You got to go through some stuff to appreciate the things that God gives you. Verse 29 says, take my yoke upon you and learn to me. Now here's where it gets personal. <clears throat> Jesus says, not only will I give you rest, here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to yoke you to me like that ox is in the field. They put two oxen together, put a wooden yoke around their necks, and cause them to till the, the, the ground together. It keeps them steady. It keeps them together. It keeps them moving in the same direction. And it causes them to get the work done. You see, one oxen might run off course because there ain't no yoke. There's no mechanism that keeps them stable. There's nothing that keeps them on the path that they should tread. There's nothing that keeps them teachable. You see, a yoke is a teaching tool. Why that oxen might not understand what's going on. The simple reason why there's something around the neck. So that that oxen cannot turn his neck. If that oxen could turn his neck, it could see something over here or something over there that would distract him from the path that is called, it's called to work on. I'm going somewhere with this, y'all. Every time we turn our neck to the right or to the left, we get distracted by things, people, opportunities. We get distracted by things that look good over there, seem good over there, sound good over here. People talking to us and calling our name over there. And guess what? We get off the beaten path. Can I remind you this morning that God has called us to walk the straight and narrow path. And that, that, that path is still straight and narrow. I'm going to say it again. Straight and narrow. In other words, uh, it's a, there's a method to the path that God has called us on. Because he wants us to stay focused on him and his agenda for our lives. And so he says, this yoke that he's talking about is placed around our neck. And it actually teaches us. How does it teach us, Pastor? Because it keeps us from turning our neck to the right or to the left. It keeps us facing forward. I said it keeps us facing forward. I wish I had some folk up in here that knew what God is saying. It keeps us facing forward. Looking on the Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. What am I saying? The yoke teaches us how to stay on course. How to stay on path. How to stay on point so God can use us. He says, listen, take my yoke upon you. I'm not going to force it on you. That's not what the verse says. He says, take it. Willingly. Submit to it. That's what he's saying. Submit to the yoke. And learn of me. Because the, the yoke will teach us. It's called discipleship. How, how do we grow as disciples? We get yoked to Jesus. 
and we follow him. He's leading us. He's showing us how to go. And guess what? We don't, we don't chart the course. We simply follow him. Wherever he leads, I'll go. Wherever he leads, I'll go. You see, that, that's how it goes. When he turns, I turn. When he, when he stops, I stop. When, when we back up, I back up. When we go left, I go left. Listen, because it's, uh, it's not up to me to chart the course. I don't sit down and make up my own way. I simply follow what Jesus tells me to do. And it might not seem right or sensible to other people. And don't worry about what other people think about your life or say about your life. If you are following Jesus, how do you know you're following Jesus? This book is his heart, his mind, his way, his word. When you're following the living by the word, walking by faith, you are following Jesus. And it doesn't matter what the world says. It doesn't matter what the world does. You keep that yoke with Jesus because Jesus, as the song says, he'll never lead you astray. Lord, if you lead me, I cannot stray. Amen. So there has to be a willingness to submit to the yoke because there's no other mechanism. There's no other system. And I got to close and my time is gone. There's no other system that God has in place to give us rest. Anything else that promises rest, or they, they don't, I'm sorry, the word doesn't use the word, word rest. They use the word happiness. Be very careful and be very weary of advertisements that offer happiness and not rest. Because sometimes things get worse before they get better. Sometimes you got to go through some pressing in order to come out on top. Sometimes you got to go through some burdens and some trials and some issues to mature you to the point where you will submit to that yoke. Yes. Now, we just came through Black History Month. Not only was that yoke used for animals, it was also used for people. Yes, it was. It was a form of slavery. Yes, it, was. it was a tool, same mechanism, same tool to keep them yoked moving or serving or slaving in the same direction with the same thing in mind. And while that's a hijacked form of a yoke, Jesus says, I'm not trying to ruin your life with this yoke. In other words, I'm trying to get you trained so that you can get the blessing I have for you. But if you're everywhere, every which way but the right way, and you cannot focus on the right way, I've got a system in place that will yoke you to me, not somebody else right now. They can come along and help, but I need you to be yoked with me because if you're going to learn of me, if you're going to be introduced to me, if you're going to be changed by my presence in your life, then you've got to take this yoke and put it around your neck and resist the urge to turn. Amen. Somebody say resist the urge. Resist the urge. Say it again, resist the urge. Resist the urge. He says, and learn from me, for I am Gentle, that's not a slave master. I'm gentle, that means I'm kind, I'm loving, I'm compassionate. That's who Jesus is. Amen, somebody. That's who Jesus is. He, he not, he's not a hard taskmaster. He's not going to twist your arm behind your back, make you feel bad about yourself, and put you on a guilt trip. No, he simply says, here it is, put it on if you want to. But there's no other way to follow Jesus. He says, I am gentle and lowly in heart. He said, I'll wait you out. Let you turn and get all off course until you come back and realize, like the prodigal son, ain't nothing, nothing better than what the Father's offering. Amen. He says, and, and, and you will find rest for your souls. There it is again. Yes. You will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus says, there's a place of rest for you. Yes. Have you found it? Have you found it? Now, as I close with this, the text, in its essence, is referring to this spiritual place of rest. For those that are outside of the fold of God, who have never entered in to the rest, who have never found, found rest for themselves, for, them, for their souls, Jesus says, I'm the only one that can give you this eternal rest. 
In other words, the devil will deceive you into living a life of folly and foolishness with the promise of happiness, not a promise of rest. I'm going to say it again for somebody who's still entertaining and dating the world. The devil will never promise you rest. He'll promise you happiness, but he will never give you rest. Jesus is the only one that can give us rest. Why? Because Jesus went to the cross and everything that was restless about our existence, he took it on himself. And in response, he gives us rest. Means you don't have to work. You don't have to try to earn. You don't have to try to impress God. No. Just take the rest that Jesus has provided. Because the, the work has already been done on the cross. We, we celebrate in communion the body and blood of Lord Jesus Christ because that's where the work was done. All we have to do is enter that rest. Are you saved? Are you in the ark of safety? Have you entered into his rest? Or are you still trying to impress people? Impress God? Stop it. There's only one way to enter this rest. And that's to take the yoke that Jesus offers. Submit to his way and his will for your life. Salvation is that submission. Lord, I come to you. Not because I want to join a church. I come to you because I want to be saved. I come to you because I want eternal life. I come to you because you died for me. And I believe that Jesus is the only Savior. Not a Savior. The only one that's saving. How can you say that, preacher? There's so many religions in the world. Because it's true. Jesus is the only one offering eternal life. Muhammad can't save you. Buddha can't save you. The Hindu gods and the plurality of their religious system cannot save you. They got a God for everything, but the, but the one that they, they don't have is the one that actually saves. And I'm proud to now and I'm not on an eagle trip. I'm just confident in the word of God. What Jesus promised is the only thing that will work in your life. And I've got some witnesses here today that have tried him and know him. And they have been convinced. Holler back at me if there's a witness in the house. Jesus saves. I said Jesus saves. Not past tense. Present tense. And future tense. He is the only Savior. If you trust him today. He'll save you today. I trusted him in 1979. You can trust him in 2022. Yes. And he'll save you yes, he will. today. Give you a place of rest. Father, I thank you, thank you for this promise of rest. For the unbeliever, but also a reminder for the believer that as we take this yoke that you say is easy and your burden is light, and the reason why you can say that is because Jesus bore on the cross. All we have to do is follow Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All we have to do is follow Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All you ask of us today is to simply follow Jesus. God, I pray that everybody here listening will follow you. While your heads are bowed and eyes are closed, is there one today that will say, Pastor, I don't have a place of rest. I've never come to Jesus for this rest. Matter of fact, I've never experienced it. But today I want to enter that rest. The peace that only God can provide through his salvation. Preach, I want to be saved. I want to dedicate my life to the Lord and live my life for God. If you're here in person or online, would you indicate by simply raising your hand or typing it in the chat? Put your prayer for me. I want to be saved. I want to give God my life. Secondly, maybe there's somebody that said, Preacher, I am saved, but you know what? I never did. I dedicate my life. I've been trying to get out of that yoke. 
because I thought it was a, 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 a vice grip. But Lord, I realized that that's the only way to go because I need to follow you. I need to stay in step with you. Yes. Your yoke is easy. Your burden is light. Mm -hmm. And the result is rest for my soul. I want to dedicate my life to the Lord. Is there one in person or online? I want to pray with you and pray for you. And finally, maybe there's somebody who needs to join this church where you, you can become a part of the fellowship of those that are equally yoked with God, following Him, learning of Him. Is there one? You can join online. You say, how? Oh, virtually. You can become a member of this church. We'd love to have you. Is there one? Indicate by simply raising your hand or typing in the chat. Lord, I thank you for what your spirit is doing now. In this moment, continue to work that you become salvation, rededication, church membership, prayer, encouragement, whatever it is, continue the word. Father, we love you and praise you for this precious time of sharing your word. Thank you, Father, for what you're doing in our midst. Now, Father, I pray that you continue the work even after we've gone and left this place, giving you the glory and the honor that's through your name. For it's in Jesus' name we do pray and ask it all. Amen and amen. Standing on your feet, everybody, as we leave this place. Praising God for the Lord.